Today gamers, we're jumping into a bit more Hogwarts Legacy, I'm going to be covering the 13 magical beasts currently in the game, a little bit about them, how you can get hold of them, and exactly why you want to. So if that interests you, stay tuned. That's coming up next. So today we're back in Hogwarts Legacy, and I'm going to be going over all about the 13 magical beasts that you can get hold of in the game. In my opinion, this is definitely worth doing, as these are going to be the key to unlocking your full potential as a character, hitting that level 40, and getting some of the best upgrades on your gear. Now as always, if this helps you out, a like would be super appreciated, and if you'd like to become a member of the channel for all the latest gaming content, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. Now one thing to note, before you can actually go out and capture yourself some beasts, you're going to need to complete a little bit of the main questline in order to get the room of requirement, and then you're going to have to complete the elf, the knapsack, and the loom. This is going to give you a few things, and especially allow you to have that knapsack, which is what you're going to need in order to grab those beasts. It's definitely worth investing some time in this, as it's going to be one of your challenges anyway in order to breed 10 unique beasts, which is going to reward you with a cosmetic, and give you some nice XP, which you're going to need in order to hit that level 40. You will need a few other things in order to breed, but nothing too difficult to get hold of, it's mainly going to be a breeding pen, that you can easily obtain from Hogsmeade, as this can be purchased from the Tombs and Scroll Shop. Then you're just going to need to make sure you grab yourself a male and a female of one particular species, and after a little bit of time in the breeding pen, you're going to be greeted with a new magical creature. Now kicking it straight off, the first magical beast we're looking at is going to be the Puffskin. Puffskins are round and fluffy beasts, soft enough to cuddle, but tough enough to be thrown around. Puffskins will eat almost anything, but their favourite meals are bogeys. Okay, definitely not on the top of my list, but each to their own. They are common house pets for new wizarding families, because they are easy to maintain. Another great thing about puff skins is that they are very easy to capture. From Hogwarts, we're going to be heading straight down this way, all the way down to Felcroft. There are a few closer to Hogwarts, but I found this the best location, because just up from here, the puff skin den is very enclosed, allowing you to capture them very easily. One of the great things about puff skins, every creature sells for exactly the same cost, and these, like I said, are the easiest to capture. So if you're trying to make a lot of money fast, this area and this creature is usually the way to do it. Capture as many as you want, and if you need some gold, sell them back in Hogsmeade. But for us, we're going to see exactly what they give us. So jumping back to our room of requirement, and in our vivarium, after we've groomed and fed our puffskin, we're going to be rewarded with free puffskin fur. Bopping straight outside and going over to our loom, we're going to see that we need this in order to put on any of the tier 1 traits. So if there's any tier 1 traits you're after, you're going to want puffskin fur in order to put them on your gear. Next up, and we have Diracles. Diracles are plump fluffy birds, incapable of flight. They have the unique ability to vanish and reappear to escape danger. Muggles were aware of these birds at one time and called them dodos. However, Muggles now believe them to be extinct. If you want to grab yourself one of these, again head straight down from Hogwarts just over this direction here, and the closest fast travel is going to be the West Hogwarts Valley. Just down and right from here is going to be a Dirichlet Den. Remember, if you want to make it easy for yourself, cast this illusionment to stay invisible, and any control magic helps you massively. I tend to find Glazius is probably my go-to. Back in our Vivarium, this one's going to reward us with three Dirichlet Feathers. And again, if we go outside, we're going to go to our loom, and we're going to see that this is now exactly the result we need in order to upgrade our gear with any tier 2 traits. The next magical beast is going to be the Neasel. Neasels are cat-like beasts that have large ears. They can be aggressive, but if they like a witch or wizard, they make exceptional pets. Neasels are highly intelligent and have an ability to detect suspicious or distrustful people. Keeping up the trend of heading downwards, we're going to go just down and right, and go to the fast travel of Brockborough. Just down from there is going to be a Neasel Den, allowing us to grab them easy there. Again, the resource that this one's going to give us is very, very important, quite a bit more so than the others I'd say, and that's going to be free Neasel fur. If we head back to our loom, this is now going to allow us to upgrade and put on the tier 3 traits, which are currently the most powerful traits that you can have on your gear. So having some Neasels and being able to farm that resource is definitely worth having. 
Next up, we have the Festrals. The Festral is a haunting winged equine beast that is only visible to those who have seen death. They talk about this quite a few times in the game, and it's actually a really cool creature to capture. This time, breaking the trend of going down, we're going to head upwards from Hogwarts, make it all the way up here, where you can see the Festral Den. That's just slightly up from the fast travel, the East Northford Bulk. Jumping back to our Vivarium, these guys obviously like it a bit danker and darker, and the resource they're going to give us is going to be free Festral Hair. Next up, and we have a giant purple toad. A large magical toad with warts that are useful in potion making. Funnily enough, in this game I think that's just part of the lore, because no potions actually involve using these. In order to grab these, they're very very close to the location we just were at, East Northford Bog. And then you want to just head just up to here and then you'll be able to grab one of those. Back at the room of requirement, and this time if you look next to the gender of the creature, I was able to capture myself a shiny of these. Firmly heading in the realm of Pokemon, you can also get rare versions of your creatures that are known as shinies. Anytime it's got that symbol, it means you've acquired one. And again, if we go over to our toad and we give it a brush and feed it, this one's going to give us the resource of free toad walls. Next up, one that you'll definitely find because it is part of a main questline, and that's going to be a Hippogriff. The Hippogriff is a majestic beast with the front half of an eagle and the back half of a horse. The Hippogriff can soar great distances and commands the respect of anyone who dares to approach it. Now, very possibly the first time you're going to see these may well be part of the main questline when you go to the higher keep. But if you do want to grab yourself some more, you can always head straight over to here, this fast travel up from Hogwarts, and that's the West Forbidden Forest. And just over to here will be the Hippogriff then you're after. Again, back at Hogwarts, this one's going to reward us with free Hippogriff Feathers. Now, a great thing about these, as well as the Festrals before it, these can be used as mats. These two are both flying types, so if you wanted something that's completely different from your broomstick, a little bit more majestic in style, then you may want to hop on one of these. While they're not quite as fast as a broomstick, honestly they look absolutely amazing to fly, so for a bit of sightseeing you just can't go wrong, soaring on the back of one of these. Next up, and we have the Jobbernaw. A Jobbernaw is a small speckled bluebird which never makes any noise until the moment of its death. Heading all the way up to the North Ford Bog entrance, you'll be able to find these quite easily if you just head just to the right of it and go to the Jobbernaw Den just here. If you haven't got that one, then you can go to this other fast travel to the right. After grooming these, the results that they're going to give you will be 5 Jobbernaw Feathers. Over to our next magical beast, and we've got the Moon Calf. The Moon Calf is a small, calf-like beast with enormous eyes and a shy personality. They can be observed dancing when the light of the full moon hits the ground. With this one, heading up again, you're going to go all the way up to here, and the closest fast travel is going to be the Pit to Pond Ford. Like it said in the description, if you go here during the daytime, you are going to have absolutely no luck whatsoever. You'll know you're at the right place because you're going to see markings on the ground where they've been dancing, but make sure you wait till night time as that's when you're going to be able to capture them. Jumping back to our little sanctuary again, this time we're going to be rewarded with 5 Mooncalf Fur. Next up, and we have the Niffler. The Niffler is a small, a furry and mischievous beast that causes mayhem in its pursuit of shiny objects, which it stores in its marsupial-like patch. No doubt in my mind that this one is based on the Duckbill Platypus. If you want to capture yourself one, you're going to head all the way down from Hogwarts and over to this right here, the King Bridge Fast Travel. Just up from here is going to be the den you're after. After a bit of care, this one's going to reward you with free Niffler Fur. And next magical beast is going to be the Thwooper. A Thwooper is a colourful bird that has a song known to drive people mad. Very much based on owls, and this one can be captured if you head all the way down. We're going to the Feldcroft region. We're going to fast travel at Rookwood Castle. And there's a Thwooper then right there. 
These ones absolutely love to fly around. If you need to bring them down, just make sure you're brushing them or feeding them and they will eventually come to the ground. And the results you'll get from these ones is going to be free throughput feathers. Next, we have the Unicorn. A unicorn is a shy and beautiful equine beast that sports a horn from its head. The foals are said to have shimmering golden coats. If you want to know the best location to capture these, you're going to go to the upper Hogsfield fast travel. And then there's a unicorn den just to the left over here. Bit of brushing, bit of food later, and this one is going to give you free unicorn hair. Now the next one, and a very important one to get hold of, is going to be the Phoenix. The Phoenix is an elegant rare bird that possesses powerful magic. It is reborn from the ashes after bursting into flames. The loyalty of the Phoenix is hard won. This one is unlike the rest of the creatures, because you can't just go out and grab them. This is part of a quest you get from Deke, and the quest is called Phoenix Rising. You're going to be heading all the way down here to the Poid Sea Coast. Then you're going to want to go to the fast travel I show here the Phoenix Mountain Cave. Just down from here is the entrance, and then you can make your way all the way inside in order to grab yourself a Phoenix. These are very rare however, so you can't just capture as many as you want, and in fact you can only get one in this game. Heading back to the Room of Requirements though, not only does this look like an absolutely awesome beast to have, but it also gives you the resource free Phoenix Feathers. Our last, but definitely by no means least magical beast that we're going to be going over is going to be the Graphorn. Graphorns are large mountain dwelling beasts that have a tough hide and two sharp horns. The tentacle-like appendages on the Graphorn's face are used for capturing food and tending to their young. Graphorns are known for their aggressive nature, however a witch or wizard has been known to befriend one under rare circumstances. This is probably my favourite magical beast in the game currently, and it is part of a mission however that you do not get until very late into the game once you've completed the Sandbacar's trial. You're going to head all the way down here to the very bottom of the map at the Klagmar coast. From here the fast travel is going to be Klagmar castle and just down from here is going to be where you can capture them. Now one thing I didn't realise until I'd started this video is that you can actually capture more than one of these. I thought it was going to be a little bit like the Phoenix, but it's not. You can capture these the same as the rest. Except instead of capturing it with your knapsack straight away, it does put up a bit of a fight. But more as that works perfect, and this can be a great place to even test your builds at. After that, grab it with your knapsack, and now you can head on home, but this time you can use this as a man. Absolutely awesome, smashes through a lot of obstacles and is a lot of fun to ride. Definitely one of the best mounts in the game, it's just a shame that you don't get into a lot later into the game. But back at our room requirement, the attention to detail on these is absolutely amazing. I love the fact that they've made them a little bit like a dog with their hind leg lifting up and exactly like the other magical beasts and this one's going to reward you with a resource and this one is going to be free Graphorn Horns. Now you've done all the hard work, you own every magical beast that you can get hold of, but what exactly have you been doing it for? Well, like I said earlier, you can breed them, so now you can get that challenge completed, but also you 100% need these in order to get the most out of your gear. If you want to upgrade your gear, making your character as powerful as possible, having all of these beasts and having their resources is the only way. Each piece of gear can be upgraded three times, and the resources you need to use go up significantly with each upgrade. At first, I thought that what resources was needed was tied to each kind of piece of gear, so head, gloves, back, things like that, but actually it's tied to whether it's offence or defence. One thing to know, when you get to that third final upgrade for each piece of gear, you will need to be using some of those endgame captures, such as the Phoenix and the Graphorn. Also, one thing I noticed, if you're looking at the numbers at the start, over here I have one that I would say is probably a perfect roll with 114. That's the highest I could find in the game. If you're upgrading an offensive item, then it's going to give you additional defense. And if you're upgrading a defensive item, it's going to add on offense. So if you want the completely strongest build, I found that you'd probably want to make sure the item you've got on starts off at 114 and then is upgraded three times. As you can see here, I've got 4,000 health, 438 defense, and 450 offense. 
If I had a perfect build, I believe, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about this, but the best I've found so far is 114, and because I'm missing a few on the defense that were 107 and 109, that's where I was missing out on a few of my stats. So if you're aiming to get the best from your build, probably wait until you've got the perfect gear. Right, no doubt in my mind that has taken a lot longer than it should have, but hopefully it's helped a few of you guys and girls out. As always, Wolfins Gaming, take care. I'll see you on the next day.